as people are coming in now. All right, we're all live. Hello, everybody. We'll get started in just a minute. Hi, everyone. Um, I know there's students joining from all corners of the world. Um, we have some students in Chile, have some students across the Middle East. Now we have some students in Bangladesh, Pakistan. We'll start to you. So thank you so much for joining. Um, we will get started in a minute. I'm really excited to introduce you all to Professor Kareem Lakani at the Business School. Um, and in the please let us know where you're based right now and what the temperature is outside. Um, I'm in California right now, so it's six. It's six degrees Fahrenheit. If it's like. I don't know what that is actually. Oh, you're so American, Tiara. Like, you know, <laughs> I always thinking in Fahrenheit. <laughs> no, that was very uncultured of me. <laughs> uh, if you guys can also turn on your cameras, it'd be great to see all your lovely faces um, as we get going. Fantastic. Osborne, Claudio, Moheb, I see you. Victor, welcome. Gopal, welcome. Raja, welcome. Shivam, Jasmine, Selene, welcome. Fabian, welcome. Uh, great to see all of you again. Yeah, please do turn your cameras on so you guys get to see the global connection that we're building. And again, please use the chat to tell us uh, what city you're in and what the current temperature is. Uh, right now it's 10 degrees Celsius in Boston. It's uh, warming up for us. Uh, the snow has melted um, and uh, we're looking forward to spring. Uh, but as I was telling our team, you know, uh, any moment, uh, you know, up till the middle of April, almost to the end of April, we could always get a snowstorm. So that's just the, the, the joys of living in the northeastern part of the United States. Um, so we'll get la launched. So my name is Kareem Lakani. I'm a faculty member here at Harvard Business School. I was born in Karachi, Pakistan, uh, and then my family uh, immigrated to Canada when I was 12. Uh, I did my undergrad uh, at McMaster University in engineering and management. Uh, in Canada, then I worked for a few years at General Electric, uh, and then I was fortunate enough to uh, gain admission into MIT for my master's. Uh, then I worked for a few more years after that, and then I came back to MIT to do my PhD. And it's a real pleasure for me to welcome you all, uh, uh, tell you a bit about Crossroads, uh, but also just sort of uh, talk a bit about, uh, you know, uh, what innovation and entrepreneurship and impact means in the world. And so what I want to do with us and the time we have, we only have half an hour, so we're going to try to compress a whole bunch of things together in this, uh, in this conversation. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll walk you through a little bit of a case discussion. So, you know, Harvard Business School is known for its case discussions. So we'll do a little bit of a case discussion together. Um, and, and then we'll take some questions uh, at the end as well in terms of uh, different folks. Uh, we may want to just mute everybody because uh, I'm hearing some feedback. If you are uh, participating with us, please do mute yourself. Uh, and when I call on you, please unmute yourself and we'll, we'll work that way. One thing uh, about participating in Zoom, by the way, all of our whole university is now teaching on Zoom. So you're, you're like any other Harvard student participating in Zoom. One thing that we've learned is how do you run a class discussion in Zoom? So if you know uh, in your Zoom window, you have the ability to raise your hand. So why don't we all just try uh, uh, to raise your hand uh, so, and we'll use that uh, to, uh, to call on you and so forth. So if everybody tries to raise their hand, uh, then you'll know how to interact with us. Great. So more people should try to raise their hands. Uh, and, then, uh, and then, of course, I have the, the magical power uh, to, you know, uh, clear all the hands, too. So there. Uh, OK, so uh, again, I'm going to clear all the hands. Uh, now you know how to, how to, how to raise, uh, um, uh, raise your hands. So I'm going to share my screen with you uh, and my iPad. So you see um, the case discussion uh, we're going to have actually is about this company called Zipline. So Zipline uh, is, uh, uh, is based out of the, founded out of the US, uh, but is trying to actually work all over Africa and is trying to rethink um, healthcare delivery. So, uh, um, so what I wanna do actually uh, uh, is uh, sort of show you what a case at HBS might look like. So here's a case that my colleague and co-founder of our program, Thurman Kanna wrote. 
Uh, this case literally just got written, uh, you know, five months ago in November, uh, and it's about Zipline, the world's largest drone delivery network. So if you were in a classroom with us, if you're participating in our program and we do, do a case discussion, you would actually get this 20 page document, uh, which describes Zipline in, in, in lots of detail. Um, and then we'll, um, we will then have a conversation about uh, what does it mean to, to be running Zipline and what this looks like. So I just want to give you a highlight about what Zipline is about as a company. Uh, and then I'm going to show you two quick videos and then we'll talk about uh, Zipline collectively. Okay. So the, the, the founder is Keller Renato. Um, and he's talking about, if you think about DoorDash and Instacart, these are uh, services here in the US which do delivery, right? Uh, they're using a 3000 pound uh, gas combustion vehicle driven by a human driver uh, to deliver something that only weighs two to five pounds. That's completely insane. Somebody's gonna build the first automated logistics network and it's gonna be a hundred billion dollar company, right? So Keller uh, went to undergrad here at, at Harvard, did his PhD uh, at, uh, at, uh, at Stanford and decided to sort of revolutionize uh, delivery by creating a drone network. Uh, you'll see what that looks like. But at the moment, what's inter interesting about them is that they are you know, mostly right now in Rwanda. Uh, they're doing uh, blood, blood delivery all over Rwanda through these drones. Um, and you know, they've been very successful. So, uh, the company is, has about 300 employees, San Francisco, North Carolina, Rwanda, and Ghana. It's raised an insane amount of money, $233 million, uh, and, uh, and uh, 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 has been valued at about $1.2 billion. Um, so let's go, uh, let's, let's go watch uh, two videos about these guys um, so we understand what they do. Uh, one is just an overview of their, of their drone network. The second is an interview with Keller. Uh, and then we'll talk about, hey, how should this company think about its future? Okay, so let me uh, share with you uh, my, uh, oh, wait one second. Great, let me just share with you my, my, my browser uh, and we're gonna watch two videos, okay. Zipline is divided into a different team. We have the flight ops who carry about pre-flighting plans, packing and routing the packages and make sure that plane can fly. And then we have health ops. You can include more of the people with the knowledge of the blood product. We make order to Zipline by using SMS or by using uh, WhatsApp. The package is handed to flight ops. We scan the package and that's when we put the vehicle on the launcher. The vehicle will fly autonomously up to the hospital. We can avoid expiries, we can avoid stock out because the supply chain has improved. Blood is life, but it is saving life. No one does. Okay, then one more video uh, that talks about what how Keller thinks about the world as well. So let me show you that. Uh, you know, I... I uh... Zipline is an instant delivery network for healthcare products. And we use drone delivery at national scale to allow countries to provide universal access to healthcare to all of their citizens. In the long run, we're just a new kind of logistics network. Okay, so we have some video, and I want, to, I want you to walk us through what we're about to see here. But sure. uh, this is the drone takeoff process. Ex explain what's happening. Yeah, so uh, we operate from, a from our own distribution centers, and the vehicle will basically launch from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in about half of a second. And once it's in the air, it's flying fully autonomously out to one of the many hospitals or health centers that we serve throughout the country. Okay, so we also have some video of the actual supply drop. So once it's in the air, it's now gonna fly, it's flying autonomously, right? Yeah, yeah. It, and when the vehicle arrives at the hospital or delivery site, we'll actually deliver the package from about 30 feet up in the air, and we can deliver into what our customer's quote unquote mailbox, which is the size of about two parking spaces on the ground. So it's super, super accurate. And then this is the video of the drone recovery process because it actually has to get back to base somehow. You have to land. Right. And what? This yeah, is so there's no landing gear on these aircraft. I mean, we, we build everything from scratch. Uh, it really hasn't existed in the world before, and we're catching a one centimeter target on the back of the aircraft. This is the advantage of using highly precise flight algorithms rather than pilots to fly planes. What happens when it's windy? 
I mean, interestingly, you know, it's not enough for us to say that we can save patients' lives when the weather is bad. We have to be able to operate all the time. So we fly in crazy storms, day in, day out, rain, wind, um, everything. And finally, Zipline is expanding its delivery radius in Rwanda. Explain that. Yeah, the, so the way, that we, the way that we serve countries is we'll build distribution centers to cover every human uh, in the country. And so you can see basically operating from two distribution centers, by the end of this year, we're gonna make, we're gonna, in partnership with Rwanda, make Rwanda the first right. country in the world to have universal access to what's, healthcare. What's the cost per delivery? Is, it, is it, do, do, you, do you break that down? Well, that depends on which country and the price okay. of labor in each country, but generally, it's less expensive than doing a similar delivery right. using a motorcycle. And in terms of healthcare products, is there a certain weight limit in terms of what you can actually send on, the, send on a drone like this? Today we're delivering around two kilograms per flight, but you know each distribution center can do over 500 flights a day. Right. So you're, you're delivering thousands of kilograms of right. medicine to hospitals and health. Now the Rwanda government has has obviously given you a path to do this. The U.S. is a lot more complicated. Do you see this coming here soon? So. A lot of people assume that rural healthcare is only a challenge in developing countries, but that's actually not the case. You know, uh, critical access hospitals in the U.S. are closing at a record rate, right. and the U.S. has the highest rate of maternal mortality in the developed world. So uh, we're actually partnering with the Department of Transportation in the U.S. and the FAA, who are looking at Rwanda as a role model and saying, how do we bring this here? And we're going to be doing our first commercial flights in North Carolina in the first quarter of 2019. And is, is, it, is it specific to North Carolina in terms of that state deciding to do it because of certain yeah, that's air traffic what, that's control issues? Yeah, that's where we're getting started or, from, a, from an air traffic control perspective. And long term, I mean, I know when you started this, this is about health care. But, you know, you think of yourself as a logistics provider. Um, you know, is this the next FedEx? Is this the next UPS? Is this how we're going to be getting deliveries all over, all over the world? Or do you think it, there's, there's a certain use case? Yeah, I mean, you know, zip, the, the thing that really drives us is we think that people's access to healthcare should not depend on the GPS coordinates of where they live. But in the long run, I think that you're going to see instant and automated delivery for everything. Right. That really. Well, when is, you hear, I mean, you remember when Jeff Bezos went on 60 Minutes now a couple of years ago and showed sure. off drones and said we're going to be dropping stuff or, or delivering stuff right to your to your lawn. Hasn't happened. You're actually, it hasn't happened, but you're doing it in, in other countries scale. at national scale. <laughs> yeah. So. You know, how far out do you think that reality is if you think it could become a reality? It is a reality today. No, 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 but I'm saying, I'm saying for, for, for everything. For, for, yes. I mean, whether you're going to get your pizza from Domino's this way or from uh, either whether it's drugs are going to get dropped on your door or, or what have you. Yeah. I, I think that it's just a difference in vision. You know, I, we think that the long term, the, the, the potential over the next few years of this kind of technology, of autonomous technology, is right. to provide universal access to healthcare and not to deliver burritos or pizza. Right. And you built all, we should say, he built all of this technology himself. This is not like off the shelf hardware or software. Um, our, our team did. <laughs> and, and, you know, the entire team is driven by, by this overall vision and mission um, to, to change the way that healthcare logistics works. Okay. So you guys now have a sense of this company uh, and, uh, you know, what is, what's it about? And so what I'd love to do is have a conversation with us about uh, what, what, what its future might look like. And so again, I'm gonna share my, my iPad with you uh, and uh, uh, let's, let's chat about um, uh, what will Zipline be when it grows up, okay? Uh, and uh, the question I wanna ask you is at the moment, Right, they are focused in Rwanda, in in sort of Africa, Ghana, and you know Uganda a bit, uh, and 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 Rwanda, um, and uh, you know, and they're doing health logistics, mostly blood logistics, right? So they're in the top left quadrant. Um, you know, uh, you could imagine expanding into all countries in healthcare, or you could expanding into developing countries into sort of doing, you know, uh, what's known as doing all kind of logistics, or you could be global. So who has a perspective? You know, it's a, it's a, it's a seven-year-old company. Uh, they've developed the technology themselves. Uh, what would you sort of say uh, is, the, is the strategy that they should be following as you think about this case, uh, your own context, and how you would, uh, you would, uh, you would, you would imagine they should uh, participate? So uh, just raise your hand if you want to participate. Uh, uh, again, please do turn your videos on so we can see all of you. Uh, and, then, um, and then we can start the conversation. All right, so Moheb, 
uh, is first, Moheb, uh, what's your perspective? So in name of love, this is Moheb Isar from Afghanistan. So uh, I think in the Afghanistan context, it's, it's very much uh, appealing that we have to have this company for, because in Afghanistan, there are lots of war and uh, people make it enjoyed very easily. So I think in Afghanistan, it will be working very, very well. So it will really work in Afghanistan in, in a context such, of, such as Afghanistan. Great. So, Mohab, so, would you, Mohab, Mohab, so would you say stay, like so expand to other developing countries, right? And would you stay in healthcare or would you uh, expand into, you know, pizza delivery as well? No, no. I, I, I think that it will be better if they, if they can expand it to pizza delivery but the most mostly they should focus on these countries like afghanistan or ghana and or other countries with the or they're having lots of war for example in these countries they can uh, they can also they can um, delivering pizza as well as they can uh, uh, facilitate healthcare facilitation so in my perspective both or uh, both of them both of these services might be working in afghanistan great great manisha what is your perspective on this? Thank you. Manisha, just unmute yourself, please. Okay, Manisha is not uh, responding, so I'm gonna go to the next person, then we'll come back to Manisha if she's still uh, available. All right, uh, Abraham. Yeah, so I'm Abraham from Ghana, and I think uh, Zipline has been really effective in the Ghanaian context. And um, I would say that the, the potential in developing economies is uh, really huge in terms of healthcare and uh, looking at the complications of having to uh, um, obtain authorization <coughs> from uh, more advanced countries, you know, as they encountered in, in the US and, and having to go to North Carolina. I think uh, the opportunity in developing countries is really great and focusing on healthcare, they could diversify. Currently, Zipline in Ghana is doing uh, um, COVID um, vaccine delivery. So, so they could diversify into different uh, aspects of healthcare services. So you would say stay in healthcare. And in fact, it might be easier, Abraham, you're saying to work in emerging markets in developing countries than trying to get through what's happening in the US. Great. Uh, yeah, so, I, I think ahead, there please. is great, great infrastructure in the developing economics. And also uh, looking at uh, 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 like consumables in Africa, there are other firms that are doing that delivery like uh, pizza and burritos. So, uh, focusing on healthcare would be great. Yeah, and so both, but but there's a need for it, there's a demand for it, and also the the logistics might be set up uh, to help them help them right. uh, uh, go go do that. Great. Yeah. Uh, next up, Jasmine. Jasmine Nayak. Um, good uh, good evening, everyone. Because it's uh, night in India, I'm Jasmine from India. So I see uh, from Indian context where we have such narrow nodes, uh, roads, and population is very high. So I think in Indian context, this type of idea would be great. It's, it's a great business idea because here the roads are crowded. Uh, bikes cannot go, car, car to, we can't even imagine. I think this kind of services will be a great benefit to Indian. Because great. So, 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 so Jasmine, would, would you say, would you tell them, the, the big question we have right now is if you look at the quadrants we have, right? You could be health logistics yeah. in emerging markets, or you could be everything to everybody, right? Given where they're at now, what should their yeah. ambition be? Should they try to be, you know, like the UPS and FedEx of the world or DHL of the world, or should they be really focused on healthcare, healthcare, healthcare in emerging markets? No, they should expand. Really, they should expand because uh, it's business. They should think of uh, going to other sectors, uh, not limit them to uh, healthcare. Why? Uh, because I think uh, if uh, it is technology, this I am an engineer, so I know it is drone technology. I think the future we have to evolve, and we have been evolving the human. So I think this is the future. We. And petrol prices are rising in India, it's 100. So I think these drones are the future. Okay, This great. is business. Great, no, I get it. So, so basically saying, look, like, don't be so narrowly focused. There's many other two pound, three pound, five pound delivery things that could happen. And you might as well expand out broadly. Nasiru, Nasiru Sakina. What's your perspective on it? 
I am Nasiru Sekina from Ghana. Great. So what do you think, Nasiru? This is my first time of participating in this program, and I can see it is really making a progress. And I also suggest that besides using drones to, uh, in the health sector, it can be used in the other way too. So would you say expand, stay in developing countries and expand into other, other sectors? Or would you say, as uh, Jasmine said, expand broadly, like go expand it all over the US, but also expand into other sectors? It should be extended to other countries, not only the developing countries. Why? Why, Nasiru? Why do you think that should be the case? So Jasmine's argument was, what she said is, because oh, we should do it because of technology costs, right? Technology is, is low cost, you can expand. What's your, what's your rationale for it? Go ahead, Nasiru. Oh, the next week, the next week. So expansion because why, Nasiru? Okay, I might have, we might have lost this year. We'll come back to her. Uh, Enrique, Enrique, what do you think? Hi, everyone. I'm from Mexico. Well, when we, when we have a project, I would like to this project be in every part of the world. But actually, this uh, project uh, focus in emerging or in developing countries. Uh, I think that it's uh, the good point to focus in these countries because actually, it's solving the problem of logistics. Uh, the logistics is so difficult because we need to use, uh, in order to improve some technicals, some techniques like, like artificial intelligence and so. So I think that it's good to only in developing countries and the next step will be great in all countries. So as I write in the comments of the, um, the Zoom, it's also useful maybe for other important topics such as catastrophes, uh, environmental catastrophes. So yeah, I, I, I think so. Great, great, thank you. Again, again, what we're trying to do is for us to build a framework, right, to anal analyze, right? When you are an executive, when you're starting a company, right, or you're running a company, you always face choices. You always face choices saying, okay, where should I expand? Where can I, where can I grow? Do I stay in the same market? Do I expand into other markets, right? Do I, uh, do I scale very big or do I start very small and, and, and get going? Those are choices that, that entrepreneurs in all settings face. And what we're trying to do here is to sort of say, in this very you know, short amount of time that we have, to say, oh, what might this look like for a company like Zipline, right? So we sort of said, you know, what we heard you know, from Moheb is like, look, emerging markets have a big need and healthcare is a big need. So let's stay here and keep growing there. You can cover lots of different things to pull that off, right? And then, you know, uh, Sakina uh, 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 sort of argued, and Nasir Sakina argued, no, no, in fact, you know, this, this, is, this is a universal need. Everybody will need it. So think about uh, having grander ambitions, right? And then, uh, you know, Enrique saying, no, focus just on, on, on developing countries. And part of a case process, when you come to a case discussion classroom, is to get these diverse perspectives and then use these diverse perspectives to help us inform and come to, uh, come to some, uh, some, some, some judgments here. So I'm going to get a couple more, more colleagues in uh, from, our, uh, from our conversation, uh, and then we will, uh, uh, then I'll tell you a little bit more about Crossroads, what we're trying to do, and, and hopefully, you know, encourage all of you to apply uh, to our program. Uh, and and participate in our learning journey. So I want to get Osborne. Osborne, your perspective on what will Zipline be when it grows up? Osborne, what do you think? Um, well, personally, I think um, a great step has been taken in terms of their do, their do network delivery. And then, in my personal opinion, I think they should um, stay in the health logistics. They should keep on um, um, procuring serve as a, a supplier in the health in the health logistics because. We live in a competitive market, and then definitely there are going to be some companies that would be coming into the market for competition. So if they are, if they are, they will be able to um, 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 gain expertise in um, procuring health logistics to um, other countries. It will be far better than them um, 
expanding their networks. Where if let's say for example, if they expand their networks to um, let's say food delivery, there might be other companies that might put all their resources into um, um food delivery and then as a result it will lead to um low cost it will lead to low cost which will which will make which will make the comp the computer outrun the zip line so i think my, my main um focus uh, my, my main in my opinion i think they should remain in the um health logistics and then they, as as time goes and they develop they um, expand the market to all countries rather than the developing countries Fantastic. Great. Again, again, you know, we're, we're, we're basically building a logic, right? We, we're thinking about barriers to entry, right? What are the barriers to entry uh, uh, in, in, in different, you know, markets, right? And then we're also, you know, what we're arguing for is uh, sort of expansion capacity, right? Can I actually expand to other markets, right? Other regions, right? And then you will also want to think about, right? What you also want to think about is, oh, right? What is my mission, right? Am I trying to build a burritos delivery network or am I trying to go solve a healthcare problem, right? So the mission of the company matters as much as, you know, what is out there uh, for us. Okay, last comment, uh, uh, Rishma Banu. Rishma, tell us what you think. Hello, everyone. I am Rimsha. Uh, sorry, due to I apologize for being an uh, um, weak internet connectivity. I'm from Pakistan and it is a player to talk on this uh, topic. I think that, um, am I audible? Yes, you're good. Uh, this zip line um, is a great initiative if one would work in, on it. Na? Um, every initiative have a pro, pros and cons. And if we both look at the cons, uh, we can see that there are many barriers to in expanding this to a wider network. And uh, if we want to look that um, it is an initiative uh, of, for being an entrepreneur, then it is uh, a great opportunity to um, keep uh, these develop, underdeveloped countries such as Pakistan uh, to grow with, with, along with the world. Like uh, if uh, like the advanced countries uh, like America and uh, USA, they can bring the lower and developed countries uh, with the, with them with the line of success with such um, ideas and uh, innovative uh. great great Rimsha. and so again what we're seeing again is a question about strategy right and so when we think about strategy so again we want to think about when you want to expand think about barriers to entry expansion capacity your mission but you also want to think about what we call a business architecture Right. The business architecture for a company has two dimensions. One thing is what we call a business model. OK, <clears throat> a business model it consists of value creation. OK. And then value capture. Right. When you run a business. Right. You want to think about all the reasons why a customer might come to you and transact with you. That's the your value creation story. OK. And then your value capture story is. Why, how will you make money from the value you're creating from the transactions that the customer is doing? So that's your business model. But in order for you to be able to deliver value, you need to think about your operating model as well, okay? And the operating model is very important because that, that thinks about scale, right? How many customers do you serve, right? It talks about scope. What products do you offer? What regions are you in, right? And learning. So in the, in the case of Zipline, right, the question for them is, you know, do we have a sustainable business model which leads to profit so we can keep growing? So what's value creation for us? What is value capture for us? But importantly, when we're thinking about these choices, do you expand or not into other regions? You wanna be thinking about scale. How, how easy is it for me to serve more and more customers, right, in more and more regions? And might there be barriers to me as I expand across developing countries as I come to the US or not. So we're thinking about scale. Same thing with scope, right? I'm good right now with blood supply and vaccines, right? What would it take for me to now also deliver pizza as an example, right? Pizza, well, that needs to be warm, right? I'm used to cold stuff, 
medicine needs to be cold. Now I got to think about heat, right? Because I'll be upset if my pizza is cold, right? And so how do I think about scope? How do I actually make the scope happen, right? How easy will it be for me to move into other, other, other parts? And then learning is how do I keep improving? Somebody is scratching on the on the surface, so stop doing that, please. Uh, um, and so, so the, all of those all of those questions, uh, you know, become the key elements that we that we think about um, as as we are analyzing a case. So, what I want to do for for you all is just to give you a little bit of a flavor of what it means to be in the Harvard Business School classroom and how uh, you know we work with our students. Again, the case discussions typically run like 90 minutes, right? You've read the 12 pages, uh, 20 pages, and then you're ready to come in and have an interaction with us. And us as faculty members are there to push you, to think with you, to connect people together, and also have a lot of fun uh, while, we're, while we're learning together. So what I wanna do quickly is uh, two things. I wanna sort of remind you about our program. Uh, and uh, let me just bring up my browser. Uh, uh, on this, uh, let me uh, stop my share here. Uh, and um, okay, uh, let me go back, share my screen. There we go. So uh, our our program is is here. Uh, we you know we're part of the Mithil Institute for South Asia, but we're you know a global program. Uh, the key thing is for you to apply. Uh, so go to the apply page and apply. Uh, and uh, we're looking for people like you uh, who are first uh, in uh, person in, in your immediate family or first member of a generation to attend university uh, between 18 to 26 years old. Um, and our program is really set up uh, so that you get benefits throughout. So uh, you get free access to Harvard X courses, uh, you get machine learning based assessments of your skills, and you get live interactive sessions from senior Harvard faculty and, and other other universities uh, from a range of disciplinary backgrounds. Uh, as you progress within the program, as you do the work, uh, you know you get mentorship opportunities with Howard alumni and industry leaders. Uh, you get to work together in small peer groups. Uh, you get access to paid or unpaid uh, internships that are both local, regional, or international, um, and uh, 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 participation in an annual regional event. Uh, and then for some of the finalists, uh, you know we're, we want you to think about ideas that will change your communities, that will change your world, that will change your countries. So we, we're actually gonna fund people for their ideas. And those ideas can be in anywhere. It could be a business idea. It could be an arts idea. If you're, if you're an artist and you're interested in doing something uh, that changes the world of arts in your region, arts are arts, are welcome. sort of social justice, uh, you know, uh, civil society, any endeavor where you, we, you think as a leader, you wanna make a difference, we wanna be there with you and help you catalyze these projects. So, so even there, we actually have funding available for people to take their ideas and drive into action. Uh, this program has been around for three years. Uh, uh, we've had three iterations of this and we keep changing it around and keep thinking about how we can, we can enable um, uh, uh, people like you to, to dream big and to have an impact in the world. I, fi I find myself very lucky. Again, what I said is, you know, I was born in Pakistan, I uh, grew up in Karachi. I was 12 when my family moved us over to, to, to Toronto. Um, and I was just very lucky to find mentors at each stage of my life who helped guide my, my, uh, my decisions. And same with Darun. And our hope is that through this program, we make opportunities available to all of you uh, as well. Uh, and that, so that you can also sort of have big aspirations, think like, like Keeler, invent companies like Zipline, do things uh, in, the, in the world and in, in all dimensions of the world from the arts to the humanities to the sciences to the business to, to law and really go ahead and 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 um, uh, change the world um, and because you know you are going to be the future that's going to you know address really big issues like climate change like income inequality like technology and our hope is that we can actually get you uh, uh, motivated energized connected uh, and uh, part of this network that we're building. So with that, I'm gonna stop. Tiara uh, it will be here to, uh, to take questions about our program, questions you might have about, about applications. Uh, we have Aria as well from the, from the uh, Human Capital Network as well to, to sort of think about various ways uh, that, that, you, that you can engage with us. And again, I wanna really thank you for all your time. Uh, I'm gonna put in my, uh, put in my um, 
uh, in the chat my my LinkedIn uh, uh, profile. So please uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, and uh, we I hope to continue the conversations conversations with you, and hopefully you'll join us uh, in our um, uh, in our in our program. Thank you very much, Tiara. Back to you. Before you head off, um, well, I'm so excited. There's so many students from all over the world here connecting um, between all of you. I'd love to take a group photo. Yeah, and, great idea. Yeah, uh, so if you guys don't mind, uh, you turn your cameras on so we can have a group photo together for Crossroads. Saman, can you take the photo? Oh, your, this is my favorite. This is my, my better side. This side is better for me. Sure thing, Tiara. Okay, okay, let's see. Okay, all right, great. let's get everyone on here. All right. That's a healthy bunch. All right. Da, 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 da. And all right, that's one screenshot. And I think, yeah, that's about as many as I can fit on you guys at one. There's too many, which is good. Not a bad problem to have. All right. All right, I got a pretty big screen of that. All right. Thanks, Kareem. Appreciate it. Fantastic, guys. Thank you so much again. Stay safe. Uh, this, this crazy you. virus is out there as well. Um, and please, uh, yeah, and please uh, chat with Tiara about any, any questions you have as well uh, okay. for the program. Thanks so much. And I will be around if you have any questions about the Crossroads Emerging Leader Program. Um, we can take questions about that now. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys had uh, an opportunity to get a, a really nice taste of what the Crossroads Emerging Leaders Program is about. I think. The learning is, is a huge important aspect of it, but really the community that you create with each other and the mentorship that you will be able to receive from Harvard faculty members, from industry leaders, from people who really wanna see you succeed is I think the biggest takeaway. And the Crossroads community is educators, university professors, high school teachers, and um, young students like yourself in over 115 countries. Um, I know that, that something that we say at Crossroads is geography is never a barrier for ideas, but I think in sessions like these, we also learn like it's never a barrier for compassion and sharing and, and community. So I'm excited to um, excited to tell you more about the Crossroads Emerging Leaders Program. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start by letting you know a little bit about who is eligible for the Crossroads Emerging Leaders Program because I know the eligibility criteria can be confusing. Um, if, you're, if you are the first member in your family to attend university, you are eligible for the program. And we also request that our students come from low income backgrounds. We believe that students who haven't had the opportunity to have cross-cultural experiences benefit the most from the program. So that's also a criteria for admission. I'm, I'm seeing some of you have your hands raised. I'm happy to call on you if you have questions about, um, if you have questions. Anita, how about we start with you? Am I mute? Hi, how are you? Hi, how's it going? Good, good. So I wanted to ask, how strict, how strict are you on um, the age restriction? I, I saw you guys um, said you wanted, um, is it 18 to 26? So can you, um, are you a bit easy there or are you very, very strict? So the idea is to create, create community. And I think 18 to 26 is, I remember when I was an 18 year old, I was, <laughs> I was much younger than I am today. But um, I think the idea is to keep the age, age similar community. But um, we also know that low income students often are in and out of school, they might have had to work for a couple of years. So if yeah. that's your situation, please write to us through the submittable platform so that we can have an idea on, on, on why maybe you don't fulfill the age criteria. So, yeah. and that applies to our travel criteria as well. We know many of our students have had to travel because of political circumstances. Um, so if that is the case, please write to us if it was completely unavoidable. Um, let us know. And we, we do want to uh, empower all of you to participate the best that we can. Okay. Thanks all for right. the question. Thank you so much. Cool. Uh, can I ask two questions? Yes. How about, um, I think the best way for us to do this is that I'll call on people in the chat and then you can okay. unmute yourself sure, sure, because sure. I, I want to make sure we get to everyone's question. But go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my first question is how many students will get admitted for this year? for this program. And second question is, we'll have any possibility to on-campus program in Dubai? That's a really good question. So 
what's really important to the Crossroads Emerging Leaders Program is that you receive a benefit at every stage of the application process. Our initial application only takes 15 to 20 minutes. And with that completion, you immediately unlock access to five free Harvard X courses with the free certificate. And this typically costs hundreds of dollars. Um, at the next stage, you get a free uh, skills assessment, like Kareem was saying. In the next stage, we provide you with more interactive sessions like this that are longer. We also facilitate peer groups and you get to learn about a topic that aligns with your um, professional and academic aspirations. For our semifinalists and finalists, we choose um, around 300 to 500 uh, semifinalists or finalists. Those students, they receive access to more intensive in, uh, mentorship opportunities, um, as well as eligibility for the internships program. For our finalists, um, of which there will be around 100, um, uh, they're eligible for internship opportunities, as well as funding opportunities. Um, the funding opportunities are up to $1,500 uh, US dollars to support um, a language study or to support an internship that you identify and up to $10,000 to support a community initiative that addresses a pressing problem in your hometown. Um, so I hope that gives you a rundown. In terms of convening physically, it is our greatest desire to bring you all together and have you all meet each other. And we really, that's the best part of the program is seeing you all meet each other really. But unfortunately, because of the circumstances of the world today, we don't know when that will be safe and different countries are on different uh, uh, tra trajectories in terms of when it will be safe to travel. And we really, our priority is making sure you're all safe. Um, when it is possible, we will do everything we can to bring you uh, together in Dubai. I don't foresee that happening in the next few months. Thanks for the question. Um, there's a lot of questions. Um, how about Gladson? Oh, yes. Uh, thank you so much. I just want to know that I just joined late and can we have the recording session of this uh, available? Uh, that's the first question. And second question, I just read like somewhere, I mean, I, I was going through this program. So the previous, uh, you know, students who won this award and this fellowship. So I, I read somewhere that you have to give uh, SAT or something uh, related to that uh, mathematical based question solving, anything like that. So I'm a bit confused that at, is there is a stage where uh, students have to go through SAT kind of or based uh, test? That's it. Thank you so much. That's a really good question, Gladson. So the first question is, um, is this session uh, recorded anywhere? Yes. I encourage you all to visit Network Capital's platform. We will have a recording of the session on, Networks Capital, on Network Capital's platform, as well as a podcast. Um, where you can hear from the Crossroads team about the different stages of the application process. Um, and this, this faculty session will be there as well, as well as a longer information session that we previously recorded with Network Capital that takes you through each step of the application process. So please go check out their website. We've also been streaming live. You can check out our social media. Someone from the Crossroads team will leave our social media in the chat right now. Um, I think it's very cool you're all sharing your LinkedIn's. I love that the most important thing is for you all to create community with each other. So I'm really happy you're all doing that. Keep doing that, keep connecting with each other um, and then connect with us on LinkedIn as well. Our link will be in the chat. Um, in terms of your second question, I think I really want to emphasize that the um, online assessment is not an SAT type test. It does not measure how much information you know. You don't have to study biology or know what the purpose of a mitochondria is or anything if that's not what you already study. Um, the, the online assessment is a thinking skills assessment. So it presents you problems and assesses how you navigate those problems. It also does a little bit of um, English assessment just because we, we need to know that you have reading fluency to participate, not fluency, but reading proficiency to participate in the program. Um, the final piece is that no one has to be fluent to participate in the Crossroads Emerging Leaders Program. I think the most beautiful part of the program is that for many, for most of our students, 99% of our students, um, English is their second language, third language, fourth language, even fifth language, which is amazing. Like you, you all know so many languages and it's really incredible to see students communicate between that language barrier and, and learn new types of communication and also see how effectively you already know how to communicate. So we encourage you to speak and make mistakes or write and make mistakes and because that's the best way to learn and all of your peers are on the same level as you. So um, if English, if, you, if you're worried about your level of English, 
please don't be, please check out the application. Um, this program, if you have doubts, it, it is for you. The, pro the goal is to empower you as much as possible. I hope Gladson that answers your question. Yeah, thank you so much. Just one follow-up question. May I know at what stage of the application or the stage of this whole the assessment is going to be there? Before the finalist selection or list, when is this assessment? Yeah, that's a good question. So the, the um, online assessment, it's not a priority criteria for selection. Um, so I don't want any of you to be too worried about the test, but it's one hour long. And it's if you complete the Harvard X course and receive a Harvard X certificate, you can take the online assessment. Thank you so much. So, I hope that answered your question. Thanks, Gladson. Um, the next question, um, let's go to Abdul. Do you want to ask your question? Uh, thank you. This is Abdullah from Afghanistan. Uh, I had two questions, actually. Uh, the first one is that, could you please clarify about the uh, follow-up stages of the application? Because I've completed the first application and uh, uh, I don't know what to do next, what's coming up next. Yes. Uh, when do we have, will, uh, when will we have this? The answer previously was about the uh, possibility of the final event in Dubai. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abdul, for the question. Um, again, I think my favorite part of this is seeing all the different parts of the world you're all joining from. So um, that's also very exciting. Um, the question was, um, what happens after you apply. So our first application, if you haven't completed it, I really encourage you to go check it out now. It, the link is in the chat. Um, it takes 15 to 20 minutes to complete. Um, and the deadline is March 22nd. Once you complete the initial application, our team will reach out to you with an update on the status of your application within the next two weeks. Um, so if we haven't gotten back to you yet, please be patient. We're, we're sorting through the applications. Um, and when we're excited to share with you the opportunity to take the Harvard X courses, um, and we will get that information to you as soon as possible. Um, after that, you'll have about five or so weeks to complete a Harvard X course. Um, and once you complete a Harvard X course, you get a certificate. You can use the certificate, Harvard X certificate on your resumes, um, and you can use it to, to, to demonstrate your knowledge um, uh, in, the, in the course you take. I know Usman just mentioned in the chat that uh, he submitted uh, his application three to four weeks earlier, but has not gotten an up update on his application status. Like I said, we'll be giving you updates in the next two weeks. Um, it, it does take a bit of time for us to assess your eligibility for the program. So thanks for your patience. Um, after that, we'll get you started on the Harvard X courses. After that, we'll invite you to the online assessment. And after that, we'll um, have you participate in more of these live sessions with Harvard faculty. After that, we'll invite our, um, our uh, uh, semi-finalists um, to uh, apply for the finalist program and also start accessing mentorship and internship opportunities. Um, Abdullah, thank you for the question. You're welcome. Um, let's go to Rayhan. And Can if I, I say your name, please, please let me know. No, it's Rayhan. Rayhan from Sudan. Okay. Well, welcome from Sudan. Uh, my, question, my question was about English, but I get the answer now. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, that's good. Yeah, so don't worry about your English proficiency. Um, I know Nasiru has been holding on to a question for a while. Okay, thank Please, you. I am Nasiru Sekina from Ghana. Please, I think my question has already been answered. I wanted to ask after application, what else? Yes, I think you have answered the question. Thank you very much. Yes, of course. Yes. I'm and again, if you have a question, it's very likely that someone else in the session has the same question. So please, please ask. Um, we encourage and our team, you can also reach us at CELPglobal at gmail.com with any questions that come to mind. Our team is here to support you as best as we can. So let us know um, what your hesitations are, what your questions are, and we will get back to you. You can also message us on social media with questions. Um, Ikra, do you want to ask your question? Okay. 
Okay, maybe Ikra. Oh. I see two okay. in the chat. Let me quickly read them out to you. One is on reapplication, and the other one um, is basically someone said that they have been outside of India once for a three-day session. Are they still eligible to apply? Um, crossroads. Ikra, I'm going to take your question first, but thanks, Maria. Hi, good evening, everyone. I just want to ask about that. Uh, I have also submitted my application a few weeks before, but uh, but still I'm waiting. But uh, the basically I want to ask that what we have to do next after we are selected. Yes. So after our team will write to you within the next two weeks. Um, especially so if you submitted your application before the priority deadline, our team will get back to you within the next two weeks for sure, and we will invite you to take. Harvard X courses. Um, and the, there are five Harvard X courses. They span an array of disciplines um, from public health to uh, launching breakthrough technologies, kind of like we talked about in this session, to digital humanities, which talks about using um, digital tools to answer historical questions. So Ikra, um, the next stage of the process is that you would be able to take any of these courses and earn a certificate in one of these courses. I hope that answers you. Will be according to our uh, graduation major, or we can uh, choose any courses. Do That's we need to look first on our uh, graduation and the major courses? So that is that's an yeah, amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Ikra. So at Crossroads, we really encourage interdisciplinary thinking and learning. So we believe that the strongest resource that you have is actually each other. And it's really amazing. I'm sure you saw in the session is to, to hear some students coming from business backgrounds, some engineers chiming in, some histori historians chiming in about what they thought Zipline should do. And so that is really the, the most um, generative part of these conversations is having people from different cultural backgrounds and different academic backgrounds coming together. So we encourage you to branch out. If you have never taken a course in humanities before, take the digital humanities course. Um, it could really, it really could open your mind to the possibilities uh, for your future. And also if you've only studied history before, take, take the course on launching breakthrough technologies, challenge yourself to learn more and expand. Um, so that's a really good question, Ikra, thank you. Um, I know in the chat, there are a few questions coming in. The first one I wanna address is that um, every part of the application process is free. It's really important that this is accessible to low-income students. That's our priority. Every part is free. Um, do not pay for anything. If you're paying for something, it's it's not part of this program. Um, in the past, we've even been even been able to send assistance with data. So access. I know for many of you, you're joining on your phones. You're using your data. I know. I know that's expensive. In the past, we've even been able to send um, financial support for accessing data. So everything in the program is free of cost. And if we were to convene in Dubai or wherever we would convene, that would also be free of cost. Um, so thanks for that question. Um, if you have questions on your particular circumstance, so I know someone mentioned they traveled, are they still eligible? Um, if you have questions about your eligibility, please write to us through the submittable platform. That's the best way for us to give you the best answer we can. Um, otherwise, otherwise I, I don't know all the information in your application, so it's hard for me to give you a, a direct answer. So Raja, please write to us through the submittable platform um, and keep sharing your LinkedIn's, that's very exciting. Um, someone asked, uh, I'm gonna take a few questions in the chat and then I'll also take a few, I'll, I'll also allow some of you to speak again. Um, JB is asking if the selection criteria is based on performance in the Harvard courses. Um, that's a really good question. I think that part of the Crossroads mission is to identify um, what, who we like to think of as, as the hidden Einsteins, the lost Einsteins of the world. And we know that your potential may not be reflected in what grade you get or what your tr school transcript is or how well you do on a standardized test. So we actually really try to get a sense of who you are in terms of who we select as finalists. So your grades are not the most important thing. Your GPA is not the most important thing. Your, your score on standardized test is not the most important thing. We really try to identify students who are driven and passionate and genuinely curious um, and honest. And so JB, I hope that answers your question. Um, your performance on this course is not a, a priority in selecting our students. 
Um, Osman is asking, how can we take Harvard X courses? Our team will reach out to you with details. Um, you just, just be patient, keep an eye out. Um, and we will share with you everything you need to succeed in the Harvard X courses. Um, I'll take a couple of questions out loud again. Um, Kailash, do you wanna ask your question? Hi, good evening. Yeah. Hi. It's, it's Kailas from India. Uh, thanks for this session. Uh, uh, really, it was inspiring sessions because uh, lastly, I followed, followed such kind of case studies in YouTube also. So my question is specifically related. Like uh, uh, in the website, I came to learn that it's provide much of like fellowships and those uh, funding for higher studies. So basically, I'm the final year student at India, and right now I'm leading a like a startup also. So probably after graduating in May, I will be having a proper that's the social enterprise. So I basically I want to know if I get through this uh, like program, is there any uh, like. Uh, uh, fundings like or the support for the uh, social entrepreneurs somewhat kind of that yeah that's a good question um i think did you mention you're already a graduate student no 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 i i, I am uh, at final year I, I will be graduating at okay. this june uh, okay. i'm the senior senior year at indian engineering student at india yeah so for our final our finalists are eligible for funding opportunities um, so that uh, you can be eligible for up to a 1500 US dollar grant for um, an internship or for a language study. And then for um, a, a few of our finalists will, will have access to up to $10,000 to lead an initiative in their hometown. So I think that's kind of what you're mentioning. If, if you have a social um, enterprise that you want to channel those funds into, that's, that's definitely fine. Um, you will have to go through a uh, application process at that stage for the amount of funding. Um, okay. I hope uh, that I'm having you. a follow -up. Yeah, follow up question. Man. Yeah, like, uh, I'm applying for this program for second time and I, I'm having some of the like three Harvard X courses certificate also. So uh, that, like, uh, does that uh, like uh, defer something like the eligibility for this program? Like I'm applying it for a second time? Yeah, yeah so if you've uh, applied before, um, that's totally fine. We encourage you to apply again. Um, some of our finalists last year had previously un applied unsuccessfully um, and they just tried again and, 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 and it was amazing. It worked out. Again. So please don't be discouraged if, if um, you have applied before. Um, I will, so getting close to the hour mark, I wanna be really mindful of everyone's time. I know uh, in Bangladesh, in, in India, Pakistan, it's, it's quite late. If you're joining even from further east, from uh, south, the south, Southeast Asia, Singapore, maybe Hong Kong. I know we had a couple of students from Hong Kong. Um, please go to sleep. It's really late. Um, you can ask our team questions at celpglobal at gmail.com. Um, again, we'll link that in the chat. Please connect with us on LinkedIn as well as connecting with each other. I saw you all made a WhatsApp group. That's great. I think that's the most valuable resource you have is each other. Please continue encouraging each other. Um, if you wanna post about this session on social media, uh, we got to hear from Kareem Lakani, who is the co-founder of the Crossroads Emerging Leaders Program and a faculty at Harvard Business School. Please post on social media. Um, and we're really excited to, to uh, get to meet all of you in the future and also see all of your applications. Um, it's been so wonderful getting to meet you. And I just want to give a huge shout out uh, to Kareem for joining us earlier. And of course, to Varya from Network Capital. Um, after this session, you can visit Network Capital's site. And we'll also email you a link um, so that you can see, see um, the session. If you want to revisit what Kareem was talking about, maybe a little bit slower, you can totally do that. Um, Varya, do you have any more information on Network Capital? Yeah, absolutely. What I can do is uh, we have one brilliant information session with other alums. So I think that will also be a great way to understand the program better and the learning opportunities that it provides and the actual transformation it's done and given for so many students who are a part of this. So once we have this session, the podcast, as well as the in, uh, alum session, I'll share all of those over mail to everyone. Um, you can go and see the alum session already. It's on networkcapital.tv. I'd share the link in the chat.
So yeah, I think that's all. And if you have any questions, please mail Tiara and her brilliant team who've been working so hard on putting this all together and do apply. Yes, our, as a reminder, our application is due on March 22nd. So please, uh, but we encourage you to, to submit it uh, faster than that so that you can get started on our Harvard X courses. Um, but March 22nd is the deadline. We also, um, we've shared the details in the chat. If you have registered for this session and you are interested in participating in a similar session on Friday with our other co-founder, who's also a faculty member at the Harvard Business School, Darun Khanna will be leading a session on Friday um, about a similar thing, about how can you create the change to transform your community, um, which is a, is a big uh, part of what the Crossroads experience is about. I know there, for, there's a couple questions that we didn't get to. Um, please email us at celpglobal at gmail.com. It's been so wonderful getting to see you from all corners of the world. Um, I know we also had a couple of Crossroads alumni step in. So I saw Sidra and Abraham and Christian. So thank you so much for joining. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to continue to get to know you. I'm glad, Nasir, I'm really glad you're feeling motivated and encouraged. I think I just want to end off by saying this. If you are a low-income student who's a first member of your family, to attend university, this program is for you and you can succeed in this program. And I encourage you all to check out the alumni testimonials that are on uh, the Network Capital site. Um, this, you can succeed in this program. Don't discourage yourself. Just take the 15 minutes, spend that time on yourself, believe in yourself and you will um, be able to succeed in the program. I um, will leave the chat open for a couple more minutes in, in case you are all still trying to connect with each other. Um, excited about this WhatsApp group. Stay active on that. Encourage each other, and and um, I'm looking forward to seeing all your applications. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for showing up. It's been so great. Stand as the picture. Sorry? The picture, the picture that took. Could you please oh, send yeah. Us? That's, yeah, we'll send out the picture. If ever, not a picture. Uh, to, we have all of your email addresses, so we'll send we'll send a picture out. That's a great Thank question. you. Thank you. Thanks. I hope I was captured in a picture. <laughs> I think we took a couple. Great. Is there any last minute questions? Hello. Okay. Um, I Thank you so much everyone for joining. Yes, sir.